Hey everyone, uh, this is uh, Obsidian Indicators. Um, wanting to go through uh, the basic setup of the Auto Trader with y'all. Uh, today we have uh, uh, two uh, of our uh, fellow analysts uh, working together, and so I'm just walking through uh, the basic uh, setup of uh, the Auto Trader in order for. Um, for them to be able to know how to use it, as well as for you to know how to uh, set it up and, and get it up and running. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, if you look at the screen, uh, you'll see the basic setup that um, I use. Um, looking at the top, uh, this, it, um, this is an MNQ. It could be a, a mini or micro, it's up to you. Um, using the 150 second Heikenashi. Some people prefer the one, two or three or five minute, but my preference right now is using the two and a half minute Heikenashi. And um, once uh, everything shows up, uh, all of these things will show up as uh, blank. And what I do then is I basically click um, the account, um, if you click this on, it'll uh, populate with the uh, with the contract that you're trading. Uh, I have it on auto uh, when I'm trading uh, alongside of it and, and watching it. And then typically you'll start with armed or just blank. And then when you're ready to trade, you just arm it. And this is the amount of uh, contracts that you will be doing. Uh, and we'll talk about the other things later, but for now, um, right below that, so this is how you arm uh, the Obsidian Auto Trader, and right below this is the signal settings. You can, um, it's a pull down menu, uh, pop it in and out however way you want in order to save uh, space on your screen. Uh, but this is the basic setup. Uh, I want to go either long or short, uh, or PTC, which is a pattern trend change. And um, I'm skipping the weak and medium buy signals, and I'm really looking for that strong buy and sell signals. And I want a confirmation, and I'll walk over what that confirmation means. Uh, in terms of exit, uh, there are two exits that I have available, uh, but let me walk you through at least with the signal settings. Um, you're basically exiting in the same manner that you entered in, which is if any of these signals uh, go the opposite way, uh, it'll close it for you. Now, um, so this is a basic setup, okay? So once you have set this up, um, I'll skip the trend filter for now, um, but go into the time and risk um, platform. So here is a pull down menu and right off the top, uh, you'll have the uh, time filters that are available. Um, put in your preferred uh, connection. Uh, I just have it as Apex. So if ever the uh, Ninja Trader gets uh, cut off and comes back on again, um, make an attempt to uh, reconnect if the data is lost. And to enable the persistent button means that every time uh, you switch, let's say for example, from uh, 150 second um, Heikenashi to a one minute, these will disappear. But because you have the persistent button on, uh, within five to 10 seconds, it'll start populating again. I don't know if it'll do that right now because it is not, uh, market is not open at present. But that is the purpose of this. And if you're not sure, all you need to do is just hover over each and every single item that's listed there, and it'll give you a very simple explanation of what it does for you. Uh, when you are trading in SIM, you may wanna uh, check this to make sure that um, uh, you're able to run it on SIM. And then um, I have chosen three different time filters here, and if I do want it to um, run according to these things, I want to be able to enable uh, the trading times. And if I want to trade the London one, I will click this. If I want to trade pre market, I will click this. And of course, if you want to trade the opening, I would click this. 
if you want to tr trade basically at any time that you are in the in front of the computer and the market is open, all you need to do is this. So that way it actually continually triggers because if you have the enable trading times, right, it'll stop trading at the end of um, 4 a.m., 9 a.m. Eastern Standard or 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard. Those are the time frames that I've chosen. And of course, you can pull down the menu and change um, the trading time any way that you wish, especially if you see a very trending market, uh, you're more than welcome to um, make it longer. So because the market is closed, unfortunately, uh, we do not have uh, this thing automatically filling. So for the sake of our time together, I'm just going to re-click it. So that way you know what I click uh, in order to have the auto trader uh, kick in. So on this note, um, let me also uh, give you um, the understanding of it. It's an auto trader that it doesn't have this you know, cookie cutter trading uh, strategy. It is fully customizable. You can change these things accordingly. Uh, you can use other buttons to do other things. So it's based upon your style of trading that you can customize the auto trader uh, to do what you wanted it to do. So we'll go deeper into that. But for now, let's skip that part. Uh, all of these are filled out. And um, let me also enable flatten, okay? Especially if you have a PA, you don't want it running past um, the closing time and thereby risking losing your PA account, especially in Apex. So you always wanna have that enable button uh, on um, so that way all your positions are closed. But let me clarify that. If you have a manual position on the screen, uh, it may kick off between 4 and 5 p.m. Um, but what this enables uh, is if there is an open trade um, that is taking place and it was done by the auto trader, it will flatten it uh, come 11.30 a.m. or 4 p.m. whenever you so choose. Okay. Another item that has been extremely helpful for us is to be able to have a news filter and with a news filter what you're able to do is to flatten automatically um, like it typically at 8 30 in the morning uh, you want to make sure that you're not going into a trade or the auto trader does not kick in a trade uh, within that time frame because in uh, some of the prop firms uh, you will lose your account and blow it up if you trade during the news so here you want to be able to uh, enable the news flatten and you can do it anywhere between two minutes to five minutes or whichever way that you want. Typically, I only do US only. And of course, uh, the high impact are the uh, red folder ones. Those are the uh, important ones that can trigger um, a PA failure. So you want to make sure that you check these off uh, in order for you to uh, preserve your um, account, okay? So with that said, uh, once um, the New York, so right now I have the London time open at uh, 11, at 1.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if we were at that time frame, uh, once it hits, uh, the auto trader will turn on. And from there, it will start searching for places to enter into a trade. Now, I did share with you um, briefly that there are two ways to exit. And um, this is the way you have the auto trader exit for you automatically and just let the bot bot, let it run. Or uh, sometimes in a very trending market, uh, you don't want to get whipsawed. Um, you don't want to uh, take a huge 150 tick or 200 tick loss uh, because of, of that huge volatility. One of the things that you can do is you go to the risk limits. And actually, let me go right into the risk limits here, okay, and talk a little more about this. 
um, this is where you check off the super trend as a stop loss. And when you do that, what it'll automatically do is, for example, in this chart, you see this uh, bright green line. This is the super trend. So here's, for example, a PTC entry. This is a pattern trend change entry, uh, which is a buy signal. And it will enter right here at the top of it the moment it is confirmed. And the confirmation comes on the second candle when it goes above uh, the closing price of the previous candle. So the entry in this situation, for example, would be at 632. And the super trend would be somewhere around 612. Okay, so you're looking at a fairly uh, wide um, stop loss. So keep that in mind. Of course, with micro, you don't have to worry as much. And what it'll do is that it'll follow the super trend and let it'll allow that to be the stop loss. So as the market is going, your stop loss will continue rising this way. Okay. Even on the pullback here, in, during this bull flag, notice that there have been wicking. Uh, the market has been uh, stop hunting and it will not hit right here because your stop loss is uh, at this present time, uh, at this location right here at 660. And it'll continue rising um, and move dynamically until it hits it, which is uh, right around this uh, section at 715. So you would have gone from 632 to 715 uh, in this particular scenario, which is uh, Friday um, afternoon um, in the aftermarket. Alrighty. So uh, those are the two ways to uh, exit. Now, typically when you have the super trend on right here, um, this is not as necessary because more than likely the super trend will get you out uh, earlier and lock in your profits before the exit uh, signals come through. Now, uh, let's look deeper into the risk limits. Okay, and this is a, a very key element of what we call the trade guard. And uh, it gives you uh, the figures, I'll show you to you later. Um, what you will do is if you're opening up a brand new mark, uh, a new account, for example, you will set it. So I here I have a, I set it at 250. The um, drawdown uh, is 6,500. Highest peak in this um, trading was, was 250. So this is not something that you control, uh, but that's what the, what the price was. And the starting liquidity um, last Friday was 249.983. Uh, um, from here, um, just check off the enable limit orders uh, in terms of uh, market offsets. Um, we'll explain that later if you have a question on it. The daily profit limit and the uh, stop limit for the daily, you can set it accordingly. Uh, my rule of thumb is 10% of whatever the uh, drawdown uh, is available. So we start at 6,500, so 10% of that is 650. Uh, when the order trader hits it, it stops functioning. Uh, you also have a, a profit limit this, that is twice that of the uh, stop limit. And once you hit that, you want to be able to lock it in and the bot uh, stops working at that point. And it will not trigger uh, in session two or session three if you were to hit that uh, in the London session, okay? Uh, with it, you have other ways to be able to customize it, such as, um, for each instrument, you can have a profit limit or stop loss. Um, overall profit uh, limits, uh, you can have a trailing limit as well. You can have a whole bunch of uh, different things uh, uh, set up within it. Even within the uh, time filters, you can actually set up uh, different stop loss and profit limits, but for now, uh, I keep it simple and I just do this thing. So if you really want to go under the hood, that's what you can mess around with. But this is the uh, default setup. So at this juncture, I look, I'm set up. Um, I'm starting at zero. 
My unrealized drawdown is 52.68 uh, because I went up to as high as 253 and came down to 251. Um, and this is in real time. And uh, I kid you not, that trade guard here, this little uh, panel here has saved uh, a couple of PAs and a bunch of evals because uh, as I was watching it go down to under a thousand, I believe the uh, numbers turn red at that point. Um, you're able to close out your positions and not let your emotions kind of uh, keep you in there uh, in a, on a trade for too long, or rather your pride rather than your emotions. So this is the most basic setup. Um, without explaining anything else, uh, the bot is able to function and run as I have set it up. And that is the end of the basic setup. Great, so during editing, I'm gonna 